take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Be sure to check us out online on our Facebook page and Instagram at Couple Synergy or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for nearly 20 years. Everyone says you need to work on a relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do to create the relationship they've always dreamed of with the partner they fell in love with. You know, Jean, before we get into today's episode, I think we should uh, talk a little bit about the 22 Date Night Challenge that is yes. going on currently. Loving all the ussies. Yes. Started on Valentine's Day, which mm-hmm. was our 22nd wedding anniversary. It is going until August 14th. Mm-hmm. So that gives couples six months to complete the 22 Date Night Challenge. Okay, so there's been some confusion, so let me clarify that. You have to complete 22 dates to be considered for the giveaways, right? Each date night you do uh, equals an entry for the giveaway. The first place giveaway will be a vacation that requires a passport. That will be an all-expense trip to Riviera Maya. Mm Mm-hmm. And we will be getting the details out soon, but uh, be prepared to sit on a beach and drink a margarita. So if you are not in the Chicagoland area, you could participate virtually, but you'll have to, well, it's, it's the same for everybody, right? You just have to upload your ussies. An ussy, just to clarify, is a selfie for two. So if it's the New Beginnings date night where you have to watch a sunrise, Then you get up and watch the sunrise and you take a picture with you and your significant other watching the sunrise. And then you upload that. You have to join our Couple Synergy Community Group. Couple Synergy Community Group on Facebook. Which you can access that through our Couple Synergy Facebook page. Or you could just look up in groups, Couple Synergy Community, and you'll be Mm -hmm. able to join. Um, On there, we have a lot more details about the 22 Date Night Challenge. We also have couples that are posting, you know, their date nights that they are doing. Hashtag Couple Synergy. Hashtag CS Date Night. And we'll be posting more date night ideas. We just included four more. So we're going to keep adding ideas as they come up. And it's great to see everyone's faces out there. Be sure to have some fun doing this. And you could win a trip to Riviera Maya. Yeah. Plus, there's a lot of other giveaways as well from companies that are participating, at least in the Chicagoland area. Also, we wanted to encourage people out there to subscribe to our podcast. Help us get the word out there about our podcast by doing this challenge. If you screenshot subscribing to our podcast, either an Apple podcast, Spotify, or YouTube, and post that on Instagram, hashtag couple synergy. And then you have to message us your address, and we're going to send you a stemless wine glass. That's a customized couple synergy stemless wine glass. Right. So go ahead and and subscribe. Post that on our Instagram, hashtag couple synergy, and then message us. And we will send out that stemless wine glass out to you pronto. And we hope to see you guys out there on date night. Oh, the other one is um, the tickets for the Sherry Jewel event are now available through the Couple Synergy Facebook page. You can go on there, go to events. Uh, It's limited. We have to, it's, you know, the venue's limited. So if you want to be there, she's really awesome. She's really the real deal. She's really the real deal, yeah. yeah. Uh, That was episode... 72. 72. So, you know, if you're grieving or you have someone that's crossed over the other side and you want to be part of this event where she's going to be speaking medium, she's going to be translating... Or not translating, but... Really just communicating with with those who have crossed Mm -hmm. over. Yeah. 
So join us at Copper Fiddle, and that is going to be on May 13th. If you go on our Facebook page, you'll be able to see the event and purchase tickets there. Yep. We also have, we're going to announce that our next Couple Synergy Weekend Intensive is going to be in October. October 16th. Right, October 16th. So look out for the event page that will be coming out and be able to purchase tickets that way as well. Mm-hmm. So today's episode, we're going to be talking about hobbies, Mm -hmm. right? And activities or, you know, interests that couples have, because sometimes this can be a point of contention for couples, especially if one person has an interest in some type of activity and the other person does not. You know, I'm going to quote you, you know, we have a video on our website that, you know, you said, as a person, we're, we're constantly evolving. Right. And your relationship has to evolve as well. It, it has to evolve mm-hmm. with you also. Otherwise, the relationship is either growing or dying, right? And that's what we do with our hobbies, right? Our hobbies are things that we want to, uh, we enjoy doing, and we want to get better and better at it and learn more. It's very interesting. It helps us make new connections in our brain. It helps us meet people that have common interests. And it helps us grow. And they're really, really, really important to have hobbies. Absolutely it is. Right. It helps you branch out your perspective Mm -hmm. and learn new things. And, you know, as human beings, that's what we're challenged to do is constantly learn. Mm -hmm. And so as a relationship, this can be kind of tricky because, you know, for example, that one client that I have that was a marathon runner. Right. You know, marathon training takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And that is time that's taken away from the relationship and also from the family. Right. And that's the tricky part. You know, it's great if you have hobbies that you enjoy together because that helps you grow in your relationship, but it's also important to have hobbies that you do because they're important to you. And, you know, one of the interesting things that, you know, we always talk about is that uh, people are not getting enough couple time, right? quality couple time, but they're also not getting enough individual time. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that absolutely takes, you know, the last seat uh, on the priority list. Right. And so it's really easy if you just step up to support your partner. If each of you take one night a week, you hold down the fort and let your partner go do their thing, right? Then you get a night yourself and you take turns doing that at least every other week. You know, I I think it's important to point out that what you're saying here is finding a balance, Mm -hmm. right? Because if there's one person that is taking that time and then the other person is not, that can breed a lot of resentment. Right. Right. I mean, back to that same example with that couple where he was a marathon runner. He was taking the time to go out and train in running, but she was still staying home with the kids. Right. And so she was not getting any of that personal time as well. That breeds a lot of resentment. And you know, the the hard part is, and you just did this the other day, is sometimes when you get really overwhelmed in your life, And you're so used to running your program. You know, you get up and you take care of the kids or whatever. You go to work, you come home, you clean the house, you do whatever. It's really scary to get some alone time. Yeah. To to be like, I have to do absolutely anything I want right now. Right. And not run errands or do anything that's work related or, you know, all of that stuff that's just running in your head all the time. Mm -hmm. But actually giving yourself a pass to explore to do something new to not you know fall into that same rut and and that was it was really difficult yeah right it's it's a lot easier to just say well you know I can use this time to do some laundry I can use this time to you know do some more work on the business but really forcing yourself to do something new and to do something that just is to is supposed to rejuvenate you Uh, is a very scary and hard thing to do. The most important thing, if you're going to take that time, you got to disconnect. You got to not distract yourself with the stuff that, so you could burn three hours really easy just flipping through Facebook or something. Right. You know, and so you got to really disconnect. And, you know, initially it's um, unsettling. Yeah, yeah. One of the most difficult assignments that we give couples is the walkabout assignment, Mm -hmm. right? And so the word walkabout comes from the 
uh, Australian Aborigine tribe where at a certain age you went out into the wilderness, you walked about until you kind of found yourself. And once you found yourself, you came back, rejoined the tribe, fulfilled your purpose and meaning, right? Well, our assignment is we send each person out on their own. 48 to 72 hours. 48 to 72 hours. They cannot have any contact with anyone. They can't talk to anyone during this time. They can't distract themselves in any way. And this time is really designed to to search inward, mm-hmm. right? Is to connect with that that introspection, and be able to, you know, face that that fear of being bored, that fear of being alone, you know, that fear of not filling that time right. with just distraction. And I think we've talked about this before: the concept of Chronos versus kairos right chronos is time physical time and kairos is time away with god vertical time right you know, where you have this opportunity to connect with yourself and a higher part of yourself and the bigger things in the world and quite often people come away from that feeling really good about what their direction is going where their life is going the next direction of their life and we've all experienced, you know, Kairos at one point in our life or another. That's just really where you are doing something and time seems to just slip away, mm-hmm. right? It just, you lose track of time because you are in this place. It's almost meditative, right? You know, mm-hmm. some people like who work on cars and stuff like that, they can, can be a very meditative process. And, you know, that's where you really connect with yourself. You know, a word about meditation because this is part of all of this is initially when you first start meditating you know and I don't mean like as a practice like that day one meditation session Mm -hmm. your mind is so filled with processing all the daily grind right you're just thinking about all the stuff on your plate or what you need to do and and that's a really normal part of meditation Mm -hmm. and that's going to happen too when you take some time and once you let that kind of pass through, then you get into that good Kairos place. And so that's normal. Yeah, a lot of people say, well, I can't meditate you know, right. because my mind gets all mm-hmm. jumbled up and I keep thinking about all this stuff. Well, that is, that is a typical experience for everyone when they first start meditation. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's you're clearing out all the garbage that's up in your head. Right. You know, and that takes time. It's a practice that you have to do over and over again until you can get into that space, Mm -hmm. right? And the same thing with taking time for yourself, it is going to be very difficult in the beginning. It's going to feel awkward. And, you know, this is where it can cause that friction in a relationship, right? Because it's new to the relationship. It's something that could be perceived as a threat, right? That you are taking time away from your partner. Um, and, and it's no surprise that, you know, whenever we give the assignment of the walkabout, that couples get into a fight, Ooh, yeah. you know, you get into a fight. It's unsettling. Coming up to the walkabout and, and even after the walkabout, mm-hmm. right? Because it, it feels threatening. It feels like there's, you know, you're throwing a wrench into the pattern that you have developed in your relationship, and taking time away for your for, for yourself can seem a selfish act. And that's why it's really important that if you want support from your partner to do this, make sure you're showing up for them as well so that they're getting their time and then it feels more balanced. It's a little scary at first. It's a little unsettling. And then it just feels really great. And I think that it is the thing that makes you a better human being, which makes you a better partner and a better parent. Absolutely. You know, this is something that, Uh, both people have to lean into, Mm -hmm. you know, and it only happens if both of you are creating that balance together, right? right? And supporting each other in it. One of the new programs that we're going to be offering within the next month, it should be up and running, is our Transformations Program, which is an online spiritual community for personal development. And we will be having live weekly meditation. And then once a month, it's kind of an open forum where you can, you know, if you're part of our community, you can ask us questions. We'll be doing some teachings. 
that kind of thing. So look for that. That'll be through couplesynergy.com website. Yeah, it's been, you know, a little bit of a, a journey kind of building the, the website right now. Our website is very kind of basic right now, but the new website shall be, will be rolled out this this coming week. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the thing with hobbies is they, they kind of take a bit of trial and error to figure out. You know, I remember, like, I like to sign up for classes. Like, I took a welding class. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> We've done stained glass. We've done... Actually, um, I think I gave you the welding class as a gift. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. Yeah. Because I wanted to learn how to weld because I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But then I really figured out it's soldering, which I already know how to do. Yeah, right. Right. right, Because you do stained glass. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that until I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, we And, and we took it, took the class together. Yeah. Right. And it just became something that you were really more interested mm-hmm. than I was. But you don't know until you try. Yeah. Right. We've taken line dancing lessons or other dance lessons. We've taken lots of lessons and lots of things. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you go and you don't like it and you leave in the middle of class. And so what? Or other times you find something. Wow, this is this is a really good fit for me. But it is a process of trial and error. You have to get out there and see what's out there. You know, meetup.com is mm-hmm. a great way to learn new things and find other like-minded people. Yeah, we, we found that to be very helpful for a lot of our clients, you know, that th- it offers so many different types of activities and clubs. And, you know, if you're looking for someone that has an interest like yours, I'm sure you can find that on meetup.com. One of the needs that Tony Robbins talks about for human beings is called growth and contribution. Those are two different needs that, you know, to really have a meaningful life, you need to participate. You need to learn and then you need to share that. And I think that really helps you feel very alive and connected to other people. And, you know, we do that now as a couple a lot. Right. And as individual people. So let's talk about our hobbies. Sure. What hobbies do we have? Um, Motorcycling. Yep. We both ride motorcycles. Um, I really enjoy shooting. I Mm -hmm. like going out and target practicing, um, just learning about, you know, the whole skill. Mm -hmm. Paint. Painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do paint. We oil paint. Yep. And canvas. Stained glass, which I do more of because you don't like it. Right. Right. And a hobby that, you know, I just reconnected with again was playing the violin. Yeah. That was a long break you took. Mm Mm-hmm. How'd it feel? It felt great. Yeah. My we, neck still hurts from <laughs> holding the violin. Yeah. We hike. Obviously, we travel. And we love you know. traveling. And if you want some great hike ideas, we have a Facebook page called On the Trail with Ray and Jean. And we have pictures all over the world of mountains that we've hiked. And I just love hiking, even though it's really painful. <laughs> uh, we're really big foodies. Yes. Which makes us big. <laughs> makes us, <laughs> We're <yeah>. big foodie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're big foodies in, in many ways. Because <laughs> we love trying new foods and, you know, new places that, that uh, you know, new restaurants. Mm-hmm. One of the rules that we have when we go try to new place is we order one thing at a time. This is like a really nice meal that you're going to have and just really slow it down and taste new things that you've never had before. You just put that video out there about weird things we've tasted. The strange foods that we've eaten, yeah. (laughs) That's on our YouTube channel. You can find the weird foods we've eaten around the world on that. That was funny. That's a pretty funny video, (laughs) yeah. So we would really encourage you to not only have hobbies for yourself, but also hobbies for your relationship. And find a balance of that, because both of those add aspects to your life that are very important. Yeah. So, you know, when we meet with couples, obviously one of the things we ask is how much quality time do they spend together? But we also ask about individual time. Yep. And a lot of people think that individual time is, you know, my commute to work, sitting on the train. Nope. And some people (laughs) think that my individual time is uh, running errands, going to the grocery store. Right. And it's not. Or going to the gym. Or going to the gym. Right. Some people can... I don't know. I mean, it could be recharging, you know, going to the gym, but a lot of times it feels like an obligation, Yeah. right? What we're talking about here is that Kairos time, mm-hmm. that that time, 
you know, that is just no obligations and being able to just be free in your own thoughts and your own feelings. Yeah. And that's, that's where new information can come in and you can access, uh, unknown parts of yourself. Right. Which is kind of the point of being alive, don't you think? Yes. So I I can use an example here to clarify a little bit more. So obviously we, we mentioned that we, uh, motorcycle, right? And so there are times that I have ridden my motorcycle to work or to the office. And that is not necessarily personal time. Right. Right. You have a destination, you have a time that you have to get there. And so it's really just commuting. Mm -hmm. And it, it is, I mean, maybe I'm saving gas, but it's really not recharging my spirit. Whereas if I go on a ride where I have no destination in mind, I don't have a time frame, and I don't have an agenda, that is where it's really giving back to me, right? That's where it's recharging my batteries. That's where I'm able to really get in touch with what I'm feeling in the moment. And what happens when you're doing that is you have the ability to change your mind. So let's say you go, okay, I'm going to head north, right? or maybe down by the lake or a winding road or something. And then something else catches your attention. You're like, no, I'm going to go this way. And you can really hear that other part of yourself sort of guiding you. And it creates a, uh, a synchronistic effect where you just sort of find yourself through being lost. <laughs> that sounds funny, but it's true. Right? Oh, but it's absolutely true. Yeah. Right. And, you know, there's nothing in any cemetery out there that says, I worked 72,000 million hours in my lifetime, or I made X amount of dollars or whatever. It's really like, were you loved? You know, maybe did you serve your country? But those are the really important things about life that's so easy to put on the back burner. They're, you know, when you really look at the reasons about why we're here. You know, we, we say this a lot that in the end, it's really your relationships that matter. Mm-hmm. But you can't possibly relate to someone if you're empty. Uh, right. Absolutely. And, you know, we don't have that time in these days here to really search inward and to process our thoughts and to figure out where we begin and where we end. And if we don't know who we are as a whole person, we can't join in a relationship and remain independent, right? And create that synergy, Mm -hmm. which is two individuals coming together. And the whole is greater greater than the two individual parts. parts. Just back in the day when we were an agrarian society, we had a lot of time. We had a lot of time to process our thoughts and feelings. You know, we went out into the field, we were toiling the soil. And in that time, we would think about our past. We would think about our future. We would think about our goals. We would think about, you know, our, our sense of purpose and meaning in this world. And we don't get that time anymore. We are constantly bombarded with things to do, places to be, people to meet. And we don't have the time to step away and figure out who we are as a person. And when we're talking about these hobbies and activities, we're really talking about this greater connection to who you are as a person. We were talking about this the other day, like how much time in the day does it really take to sustain your life? You know, and probably the best example we have of that is hiking, right? So you have to eat and you have to set up shelter and that's about it. Right. And I I think we figured out it's about three hours a day, but we have all these conveniences, something that washes our dishes and our clothes and all sorts of things that's supposed to free us up, but we're all pretty locked up because we have to go to work to make the money to pay for all that. Well, yeah, it frees us up so that we can fill that time with something else. Right. And we've filled it with much less meaningful things and with things that take us out of our life instead of into our lives. You know, if you had to sit by the river and wash some clothes, 
you're going to be out in nature, you're going to be thinking, you're probably socializing with other people. You know, th- those type of things that sustained life were much more in balance and healthier. And so now we have to work harder. It's just the same thing. Back then they didn't have uh, health clubs, right? Right. They just lived and that was exercise enough to go pull weeds in the field or walk to town to get some groceries or whatever. Well, know. I was just telling the client the other day that it was not too long ago when you would get into a car and no one would be able to contact you from the moment you left to the moment you arrived at where you were going. Right. And that doesn't exist anymore. Mm-mm. You know, we are always on call. Yep. And we have to build in time in our lives where we are off call. You know, what's interesting about that is when you take your phone away, you go through withdrawals, <laughs> which means it's an addiction. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And it's so crazy because we it's such a slow thing that we don't really realize. And to become unplugged feels very unsettling. And it actually is really healthy for us. And the way this plays out in our relationships is that we can become enmeshed with our partner. And when we become enmeshed, it's very difficult to know who you are as an individual, let alone what you contribute to the relationship. Mm Mm-hmm. And so when you break away and you do something on your own, you go through, quote unquote, withdrawals as well. Right. Where now you are left to make up your own decisions and to figure out what you want to eat, when, what is it that you want to do in the moment, how do you want to feel? You know, that that's very difficult for couples, you know, who create this codependency in their relationship. If you want to do a little assessment, think about your relationship like a football field, and you each have your own end zone. Then you got the 50-yard line, right? Right in the middle, 50-yard line. If your relationship is being played more towards your partner's end zone, which means you're giving way more than they are, or vice versa, you're letting your partner make all the decisions, or it's really out of balance, try dialing that back to the 50-yard line and let the other person either move back or step up or however, but that's, that's where you want to kind of be in a relationship where there's sort of this equal contribution and not one person making all the decisions or one person, um, sitting back and letting the other person do more than they're doing. And just come in the center and do a coin toss there. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. And hobbies are a great way to do that. Hobbies are a great way to fill up that time so that you are a better person that you're growing, that you're evolving. And then when you come back together on the 50 yard line, you have something to share about what you've been doing and what you're learning about yourself and who you're becoming. Just make sure you don't smash together. Concussions are bad, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You're funny. So we want to thank you for joining us on Couple Synergy today and talking about personal time which we are definitely encouraging. We always encourage couples to spend time together, but we also encourage each part of the couple to spend time with themselves. Mm -hmm. Our passion is in helping couples have happy and healthy relationships, and this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. And we hope that by listening to this episode, it was not only beneficial for your life, but also your relationship. For all of you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and please leave us a review. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couples Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive, which is coming up in October, and our premier program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded 
edited and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez. Thank you.